All right, so it looks as though we have a cheese wood tree. That looks pretty good. Nice roots on that one. Uh, looks as though we also have a type of cypress tree. Yeah, this looks kind of interesting. Uh, that one's gone upside down. That looks kind of just another cheese wood. Oh, hi, everybody, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. Uh, you've actually just caught me in the middle of taking a look at these little uh, plants and that that arrived in the post the other day. So I came home from work and there's a little package on my doorstep and uh, it's this little mixture of uh, plants. But this wasn't the only thing in the package. To just move these to the side, the box that had arrived was, you know, quite, quite some size. And the main thing that was in it was this big thing just down here. So this big piece of wood that uh, looks a bit like a tree stump <laughs> arrived in the post. So if you want to find out the history behind this, where it came from, what the challenge is all about. Stay tuned and I'll show you exactly what it's all about. Right, so all of these little goodies were sent to me from Andy over on Bonsai Crazy. A great chat, really fun person to watch. It has a great channel, slowly, his subscriber count is slowly climbing and, and for good reason. He's a good guy and puts out some really good content. Anyhow, he put together this tanuki challenge and uh, he threw out the the uh, was the, the question i guess to different people and said i have a few of these who would like to take on the challenge and have a go at using this as a tanuki so you know me i like a challenge so i said yeah go on then andy swing you know swing one my way and i'll see what i can do but there's quite a history to this so i think what i do uh, let's go back in time and i'll show you where this came from and how this came to look how it does right now. We got this bad boy here, which is a little dumpier one. Right, I have a strange feeling this is not gonna be so easy. Yay. Hi guys. Andy here from Bonsai Crazy and earlier on in the year I set a challenge and I'm sending these out to various people and uh, in the YouTube world and they're all going to come up with their own creations and make a tanuki out of this. So Gavin's asked me to chop it in a few places so I'm going to do that and uh, I may not chop it all, Gav. I may leave some of it for you, because, well, quite frankly, it's gonna be hard going. And, uh, why am I doing your challenge for you, mate? So, I think you should be doing your own one, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Go, Gavin. I've given it a little chop for you as requested. It was quite thick down there, so what I did was I just flattened off the end so you can actually sit that up. And it's, you're better off having a little bit like that because that'll be the size of the pot then, the edge of the pot then. Um, and then you should should be able to, you know, make these the Nabari. So there's your little chop work done. Um, you can do the rest. That's all up to you. Um, just wanted to say, it was a great challenge the other week with the old Halloween challenge. I enjoyed that one. Um, so thank you very much for putting that on. And uh, I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors with this Tanuki, mate. So, can't wait to see what you do. I'll see you all later, guys. Cheers. Ta-da. So yeah, cheers, Andy. Yeah, thanks for all of the work that you did on this. It's excellent. You can see he's put some nice uh, flat chops on the bottom. He has tidied up the base, which is excellent. Uh, he has made that chop to the top because originally this was a fair bit taller and I wanted this more or less to be cut at a 45 degree angle because I have an idea in mind. Um, so the big question now is, what are we going to put with this? You know, what kind of tree are we going to wrap around this? Now, this is going to be a, a, a long project. It's going to be a project that I'm going to have to do over several videos uh, for a few reasons, really. 
one uh, I'm, I'm going to play around with different trees and see which one works best with this and secondly uh, i do have a few other trees on their way to me over the next few weeks or even months so it might be a case that we might find a better candidate of tree that works on this in in the next few weeks and so i, I don't really want to rush this project it's going to be a project for the future it's going to be a project that, that's going to sort of take place and continue over the many months and many years to come and of course with any tanuki you know it, it improves with age you know much like bonsai so it, it's going to it's gonna, certainly going to be one for the future but it's a very interesting piece of deadwood uh, it's sure going to make for a fun challenge and uh yeah i just want to say a, a big thanks to andy over on a uh, bonsai crazy yeah thanks for sending this to me thanks for accepting me as a, as a member of the challenge and uh I'll see what I can do with it. Well, let's uh, just uh, marry it up with some different candidates and, and different trees and things that, that might work with this for now, just to give you a rough idea as to what the final tanuki might, might look like in the end. So the thing with any tanuki is ideally you do want quite a tall, um, you know, tall skinny tree to work with first to wrap it around. So just looking through my collection, I have a few just down here. So if you just reach down here, we have this wispy little tree or sapling, I guess you could say. Now this is a, this is an ash. Uh, I've never seen an ash, uh, an ash uh, tanuki before. So that's kind of a fun one. And of course, what you would do, I do have a couple more of these. So, you know, we would have more than just one to play with, but the general idea would be that you could, you know, you can see how we have the site nook just in here, just in, in the, the roots there with the nabari. So maybe we could plant that in there. And just to give you a rough idea, we would have maybe that in there, tucked more into that crevice and then wrap this around, maybe come around there and, you know, carve a channel in there for the, obviously the stem to sit in. And then of course, as it grows and expands, it's really going to, you know, bed itself into the tanuki. So that is one possibility. I do like this, tanuki, I do like this, uh, this piece of deadwood because we have all of these dead branches, which I can uh, carve into like gins and sharis and things like that. So I liked the character on this one and that's why I asked Andy for this one. So anyway, if we just put the ash to the side and then I bring back this one. Now this is a, this I believe is a hazel. Again, long, tall, skinny tree, just what you want. Again, we could follow a similar idea with this. Uh, I do have a couple of these. So again, same idea, you'd have more than one to wrap around the tree. And again, you just sort of wrap it around and we have to obviously work with branch placement and everything else to find the best place to put it. But with this, you know, because we have these branches here, you could maybe do that sort of thing. Maybe have two branches coming out either side or maybe do that lower down, have that sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, there are all sorts of possibilities for this because we have these dead branches coming off of this tanuki. But yeah, that is a possibility. Uh, we do, of course, also, if we just reach down here again, we do, of course, have the European larches. I have a couple of these. Again, we could use them. Of, of course, you know, carve channels into the tanuki and bed them in and do that. Uh, only issue with that is Andy, uh, I've, Andy's already started to work on his tanuki and he is using Japanese larches. So, albeit, you know, there's no rule to say we can't use the same style of tree. But, you know, ideally you do want to do something a little bit different to your sort of competitors. And as much as I do like these larches, you know, doing another larch tanuki, it just, it's going to be too much the same as what, you know, to what Andy's doing. So I think we're, we're trying to do something a little bit different. So just put that to the side. I have one other type of tree that is slightly on the small side. But if we just reach over here, we have this little thing. Now this is a Norway spruce. And doesn't look like much. It's only a, uh, must be a couple of years old. Uh, but, you know, it, it will grow, you know. So, it, albeit it doesn't look like much now. But if you put that against this tanuki, maybe like we were saying before, you have that little crevice point just in here. If you hollowed out that, or if we hollowed that out that so that we could create a hole underneath here where the roots could go down through and grow, we could maybe grow that up here and then, wrap it around as it grows. And it's all a case of that long journey with the tree. We don't have to create immediate results right now. It's all, it's all you know, tanukis are one for the future. You know, you, you sow the seeds now and then 
over time they will grow and mature and get better and better and better with age. So by starting with a tree this small, might not look that impressive right now, but of course, you know, several years down the road, it could look like a fantastic looking tree. Only issue is with this, it's an Norway spruce. And traditionally, you don't use spruce with tanukis. But, you know, this is not another bonsai channel. And I like with most things, we like to do things differently. So I am leaning towards this idea. So, so yeah, let me know your, your thoughts on that one. But uh, if I just put that just down, down here, create some more space. Uh, but as I say, I do have more trees on their way potentially. So, you know, over the weeks and months to come, we might find we'll have, you know, ample more selection of trees. Uh, so I don't really want to create, you know, make a decision just yet. But yeah, it just gives us a bit of an idea as to what we can do with this tanuki. So the tools I was hoping to use with this, just put that at the back there. The tools I was hoping to use. Now, I'm not really one for using power tools. I, uh, I like to work with my hands and, and carve it naturally. And I just think you, you, you work with the grain of the wood if you do that. You, you, you fill the wood, you can work with the wood, and you, you, you tend to get a much nicer result, I think, than if you're going with power tools and you've, you, know, you, you dig away at it. It's sometimes you can have fantastic, well, you can achieve fantastic uh, effects, don't get me wrong. And there are people out there who do some fantastic work. But, you know, for me, um, as I say, you know, bonsai is all about the long journey. And if you can use your hands and get involved, then it's, it's, it's a good thing to do it, you know, yourself with your hands and really fill the wood and fill the trees and, you know, really, you know, experience it. So this is the set of carving tools. So in here we have a nice variety of different tools. So we have this one, which I think is going to be the most used on this Tanuki project. This is a side gouger, so you would carve it that way. Nice sharp blade on that. Should be just a job for the Tanuki. Just put the cap on back on that one. We have, these are more, I guess what you call traditional carving knives, just a flat blade. Again, that will come in handy for carving this. Very nice, very nice uh, a knife there. This is more of a delicate one, almost like a peeler, that one. Nice sharp blade on that should be just a job for carving. And if we just take a look at these smaller ones, these are more for intricate work. So this is a, a round, a rounded one. So that will come in handy, especially for getting into those rounded grooves and things like that on the Tanuki. Excellent little carving tool, that one, or carving knife. This is more of a flat edge. A, a kind of a, a traditional um, chisel, very nice, very nice chisel that one. And the last one that we have in this set is, if we just get the cap off, this is more of a 45 degree angled chisel. So again, a very nice one, nice pointed tip on that one to get into all those sharp little or, or intricate little points in that. So very nice little carving tool that one. And then of course this is our a piece of leather for you know, keeping these nice and sharp and just uh, keeping them in top prime condition. So that will all be for the future. So I just want to say a big thanks to Andy over at Bonsai Crazy for sending me this. Uh, I will work on this. And as I say, you know, when more trees arrive over the next coming, well, over the coming weeks and months, uh, we'll play around, try and find a tree that suits this better. Maybe use one of our existing ones or we have more of those species that we can play with. And uh, we'll give this a go and see if we can turn it into a very impressive Tanuki, you know, tanuki uh, example. But, yeah, just a big shout out to Andy over at Bonsai Crazy. Thanks for this. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a long series. It's going to be a several part series. This is just part one. So part two, part three will come later down the line. And, um, yeah, with that, guys, I think I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up this video. So whatever you're doing today, have a great one. And I'll catch you on the next one.